fuck you doing? Remember that name? Good pizza with three Z's, baby. Three Z's. What's up, fam? It's your boy JP, aka Good Pizza. Check this out. This week we got to sit down with CB, aka Macho Mids, Randy Davidge. He's straight out of the 530. He's a solo source grower, hash maker, cannabis sommelier. He don't play around. He does wild events. He is the spokesperson for cannabis, Randy Savage. So all you other fakers out there, this is who you got it from. Yo, check this out, man. We'll see y'all on the show, man. You're going to get a bunch of game out of this episode and some good laughs. We'll see y'all out there, brother. Thank you for coming out, man. I've been really looking forward to this podcast, bro. Macho Midge, Randy Davidge, we got on the show today, man. What's up, brother? Oh, yeah, brother. Listen, JP, it's a pleasure to be here. I can't believe it. Dream come true. I love your podcast, dude. Nice, bro. Nice, man. I, I, I can't wait to hear the story behind the story, man. I have a lot of fucking questions. And, uh, you I know, bet let, you let's, do. Let's die. I do. I do. Let's <laughs> dive right in, man. So let's, uh, let's take it back to the story behind the story, man. Who was CJ? CB. CB. CB, sorry. Before the macho meds and the cannabis, bro. What was the, what was the childhood like, bro? Where'd you grow up? Uh, I grew up in uh, far northern California, a uh, little town called Redding. Um, it's okay. right at the, the top of the valley, um, you know, and right at the base of Mount Shasta. And uh, had a good childhood down there, just up in nature. Yeah. It's a beautiful, beautiful place to grow up. Hell yeah, bro. I've been a couple times. Uh, my buddy Ted from Alien Labs is from there, so I'm, that was who I was familiar with, um, writing with, and uh, it's a beautiful place I want to explore more. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's the gateway. We call it the gateway to the to the Great Wild North because you get up there and then you know you turn left, you head to Trinity Humboldt, you go north, you go up to Mount Shasta, Modoc, Siskiyou, yeah, and then you turn right, you go up to Bernie Falls, uh, yep. just God's country over to Reno. That's right. It's That's beautiful. Right. That's cool, man. That's cool. So what was like, what, what were you into when you were a shorty, bro? Like, what'd you guys do up there, man? Oh, man. Okay. So when I was younger, uh, obviously sports, athletics. Okay. I uh, played okay. like three sports, varsity all four years. Um, Star Wars. I was a super nerd. I okay. was like a nerdy kid. No doubt. Um, did like the academic decathlon, all that stuff. So I was a big nerd, uh, but I was also a big athlete, so that kind of nice. like balanced it out a little. Nice. You look like you're still an athlete, bro. You're fucking jacked, dude. Thank you, you, you brother. Work out, yeah. You do push ups and shit. Uh, like that? Yeah, health is wealth, man. That's I get right. up every morning, 4 30 a.m. Oh. Crack on the weights for an hour and a half, and Let's that's try. my mental health. That's part of the mental health recipe. Yeah. That's good. Cannabis, man. workout, good sleep. Yeah. Yeah, that is, that is a great regimen. Those are two of the pillars for sure. Three of the pillars. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool, man. Um, so throughout, you know, you, you shared a really funny, I don't know if you care to share it on the story, but a very funny pizza story the first time we ever spoke. Cause, oh, man. Because, like, all right, let me just tell you how I met this fella. I met him at um, the Hash Hole Island. You know yep. saying? Shout out CGO and Nosh for pulling off an epic event. Dude, that was awesome. And this guy's walking around like, yeah, brother, and fucking just doing his thing. You know what I mean? And <laughs> I'm like, who the fuck is this guy, bro? Uh, I fucks with it because I'm an 80s baby. I grew up on WWF before it was WWE and, you know, whatever, whatever. Brother, 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 brother. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I was like, I'm really curious about this fella. And then, we, you know, we spoke on the phone and... Uh, you told me a fucking cool pizza story, man. Do you care to share that pizza story? Yeah, man. My most embarrassing story ever. Yeah, uh, hit me. Hit us. <laughs> so uh, when I was in high school, you know, Friday is pizza day at the high school. That's right. And it's also game day for basketball. Okay. And so we, we get that Domino's 555 deal back in the day with the fundraiser oh, pizza. Yeah. And uh, I eat maybe like six slices. We get in my friend's mom's brand new car. She had bought it like the day before. And we all pile in there and we're driving on I-5 down towards SAC. And uh, yeah, we play this game where you're drinking a little bit of water and you're trying not to laugh. And oh, whoever yeah. spits the water out loses. And we're doing all this stuff to make each other laugh. And my buddy like makes me laugh and I start laughing so hard. And I'm like, oh, no. I'm gonna puke. Oh boy. And so I start puking, then he starts puking. The the mom is driving the car, oh she's like, Oh my god, 
buy my new car. Uh, my mom's in the front seat. Now, my mom, she's like super overprotective. Yeah. And she's like, my baby's choking. Pull over. So she pulls over <laughs> the side of the road. We get out. And I just got puke all over me. And she's just pulling my clothes off, my shirt off and everything. So I'm like shirtless on the side of the road, pasty chest with like a pepperoni hanging down. And like <laughs> the girls team is like driving by they were behind us in the bus yeah. and they're driving by as my mom is like undressing me and i have puke all over me and yeah dude i never lived it down in yeah. high school you know how things are like super intense in high yeah. school like if you get yeah. embarrassed it's just like the worst thing ever you know oh my gosh yeah dude i never heard the end of it i still have people that are like 36 years old that are like Talk about the pizza story. At, at, Did you, you get know. a nickname based off of that? Or? Oh, Pizza Face. Yeah, pizza face, my friend yeah, Heather. Right. She married my best friend Logan. She called me Pizza Face for years. Damn, hey Heather. Bro. Pizza Face not that bad. I mean, it's gonna remind you of the story, but heard worse nicknames. Yeah. So you What's know, that? I love pizza. Always have. Always will. I. For you, I man. It's a perfect match to be on here. Yeah, it is. It I'm is. a pizza hound. That's all. He's a pizza hound, folks. That's part of the qualifications to get on the show. Um, we'll, we'll ask you some more in-depth pizza questions later to Absolutely. see where he's at. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. On his pizza quest. Test my pizza knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, bro. So, all right. So after high school, man, um, what happens? What did you do, man? Okay. Where'd so, so that's, you know, that's when we start the whole, uh, cannabis story, right? So oh, let's dive in. In high school, uh, Straight laced kids went to a private uh, Christian school, so it wasn't yeah. really, you know, I don't drink alcohol. I have my, you know, purity ring on and everything. Purity don't ring, don't no smoke the, the Lucifer lettuce, you know? Like, yeah. it was very, like, you know, back then it was like, yeah. it had been just ingrained that it was like this horrible thing. And yeah. so I was like 19, and yeah, that was the first time I was, had experience with the plant, and I instantly fell in love because I don't, uh, I've always had like anxiety and stuff. And it was the first time in my life where I felt like my head was normal. And uh, nice. so it was just one of those things where it was like, whoa, I don't have this thing that I normally constantly have. Wow, no shit. You know, looming over me. It, it took it away instantly. And so from that moment on, um, you know, got my first little baby in a solo cup. And here okay. we are 20 years later, you know, the, the love for the plant has only grown over yeah. the years. And so I learned that all those misconceptions, you know, I'm still still a, a, a man of faith, but I've researched and, you know, cannabis is in the Bible. So it's like yeah. one of those things where it's like I've seen it help so many people's lives uh, that, you know, you just have to change that understanding. And my mom that was so against cannabis yeah. ended up having regenerative hip disease and wow. we used cannabis to to help her with that and changed wow. her mind about the plant. So, you know, it, cool, it takes man. some time, you know, but once you see the, the enlightenment of the plant, I think everybody can agree we're going to see even a bigger uh, shift in, in the in the public opinion on on cannabis over the next few years. I agree, bro. I agree. That's that's dope, man. Um, so you're telling me that. Okay, so you you were uh, through high school when you first started smoking, yes? Yeah, I was okay. I was a freshman in college. Freshman in college, okay. Yep. So after you smoked for the first time, you loved the feeling. You immediately went to growing because you said you just got the, your first solo cup and it was off to the races. Yeah. Straight up, just just straight up. Oh, wow, like, dude! Like right out the gate. Like, I'm gonna I, grow this fucking thing. It was a it was a 180 degree change. Wow. Because you know I had friends that were growers. Like gotcha. Yeah, being, living up there, you. Being up there, yeah. like I had neighbors, Default. everything, you know what I mean? So yeah. it was like one of those things where it was like you you see things in a complete a paradigm shift, right? Yeah. And then it was like for me that 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 feeling of relief I got just made me want to instantly explore it. That's tight, bro. So you start growing, right? What what you was growing? What'd you start off with? Oh, dude, the first thing I ever grew what was... Year is this circa around what so year? this is like circa 2005-ish, 2004, 2005. Okay. Um, and yeah, the first thing I ever grew was uh, Sour Diesel. I mean, Sour D. perfect for the show. 
Sour D, man. Sour D. Shout to Sour D. I love it. Possibly. Uh, I still love Me Sour too, D. Soul. And it's, it, you know, around that time, like, that's when it really started to make fucking waves in Jersey and on my side where I was at at the time. And it kind of like edged Purple Haze Piff out. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. I always tell my homies out here that are growing, I was like, you never know, man. I could have caught one of your packs, man, somewhere down the line. Because you never know where those things go once they leave your hands. Yeah. Allegedly. I mean, sometimes Kansas, but. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey. Hey. What are you going to do? <laughs> what are you so gonna sour, do? man. So, so how long did it take you to get good, bro? Like, Oh, it, to, to, there's to, a learning curve, man. There's a learning I know. curve. I know. In the beginning, you know, you overwater, you just, there's all these different things. Luckily, I had some, like, really good mentors. Nice. Um, nice. My buddy Jay Biddy and, you know, Pops, uh, Pops Jones. Pops? Your Pops? or No. Pops? No, my buddy's, it's actually my buddy's dad. Buddy's dad, nice. Um, and, yeah, they, they kind of gave me the recipe and mixed that with, like, reading, like, Ed Rosenthal. And there you go. put those two together and through trial and error just eventually started banging out some stuff that i really really enjoyed oh yeah you breed as well yes i oh, do nice dude i just finished up a breeding project so if you like seeds i do i've got some beans for you i fucking do man yeah in fact i named the strain i don't know if you know tony esposito um but yeah, the he helped yeah the yeah. roller he helped me name the strain kind of so tony. we're naming it god's wink God's um, wink. That's yeah, a good one. God's wink. It's I'll gonna be pour God back into the strains. Yeah, man. Uh, you know, it's like it's he he told me the other day. He's like, dude, that that's like God's wink. You, you just you know giving me some motivation in the morning, sending me some messages and stuff. I'm like, dude, I'm gonna, I'm gonna name this strain. I've been thinking about this strain, and that was like literally, it just hit me like a bricks. So yeah, I uh, I mixed uh, Natty Bumpo from Rebel Grown. Uh, male and I crossed that with um, Hunts Valley 91 female from uh, Lucky Dog Seeds uh, Skunk VA. Okay, so this sounds like a gas strain. It is nice. It I is. Like it. Yeah, I'm I'm not a candy man. Not a candy man. <laughs> no, in my in my in my hash, yeah, I like I like the fruity candy okay. yeah, terps, yeah. but in yeah. flower. I like something that packs a punch, you know oh, what I'm yeah. saying? Give me the gas. Something that feels like it hits you with the elbow off the top rope. That diesel gas, the octane, yeah. <laughs> oh boy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really gonna keep my composure through this episode. <laughs> That's great, bro. I love it. I fucking love it, bro. So uh, I'm curious, man. Uh, what was your first job growing up? Okay, so. Do you want the real first job or when I started banging out and getting some money? Let's do both. Okay. So my first job at 15, I got my little worker's permit. I okay. worked at Mrs. Fields Cookies in the mall. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Slinging those cookies. Slinging That's cooks. Slinging cookies Probably. before slinging cookies was slinging cookies. You know what I'm saying? So what, on Pimpin. The hustle was the day old cookies uh, we got for free. Okay. So oh, I get the day going. olds, I put them in the little uh, lunch sack, the little zippy, yep. and I'd start selling them, you know, a dollar a cookie. Now, the, yeah. back then, these cookies were like two bucks. They're yeah. like six bucks now. But, you know, I, I started, I would make uh, on average like 15, 20 bucks a day from these free cookies that nice. I would just bring to lunch. So shout out, Mrs. Fields. We love you. Shout out started the hustle and then uh so that was like my first job and then i worked at a mexican restaurant okay. um and then when i was 19 i got hired on at a toyota store and okay it, selling toyotas yeah man selling them yodas i still drive i'm driving 98 land cruiser i love toyotas that's, great that's the thing is if you want to sell something you better sell something you love you better if if you don't love yeah. Kia, it, you're not going to sell a Kia. Yeah. But if you love a Toyota, those things are easy to sell. Honda, you know, all those. Yeah. It's just like a good truck. And I happen to be in a market where literally everyone around me wanted a taco. Tacoma, grower truck extraordinaire is the Tacoma. Fits on those mountain roads it real does. good. And so I had the whole cannabis grower community on lock at the Toyota dealership because they didn't like eureka toyota no shit over in humble so okay. they would all come down the hill and see me and then that mixed with my best friend was uh big in the mien community you know the community? mien community What's like that? asian mob 
you know, uh, got it. You know, Mong Mian. Um. What's up, pizza fam? It's your boy JP. Good pizza. Check this out. I'm getting a lot of questions on where I can find the fire good pizza. Check this out. We got you covered. We're in NorCal, SoCal, Central Valley, San Diego. We got you covered on the slices. Peep the list. Go check out the shop. Tell them good pizza sent you. Peace, love, good pizza. best friend growing up his family they everybody loves toyota so between them and the growers Damn. i had like a monopoly on customers look at you pretty good deal fucking got the gangsters and the growers versus the custies i love it it was awesome good book man. of business yep plenty of money in those circles there was a lot of uh, trash bag tips i would call them trash bag <laughs> tips I like where it. you would get them the good deal and it wasn't a turkey bag. It was a trash bag that you yeah, would get. With just loose cannabis in it? Yeah. Or turkey bags in the trash bag? Trash bag full of loose. The full of loose. Nice. Yeah. So you would have, I mean... and Buds or shake? It was mostly shake. Okay. Mostly you know, sugar you shake. buds out of there. Yeah. It, it, it came exactly. You know what I'm talking about? It, was, oh, it wasn't just about. pure shake. It was still the smalls on the branches. Yeah. So you pick through and you get a few pounds off it for a few sure pounds no shit yeah because the, they would just come in and just yeah yeah and then also a lot of times it was trim bud too in turkey bags nice so nice. that's how you got your tip at the toyota store you take a lower commission but you would have free weed for two that years that is just the craziest california shit i've ever <laughs> heard in my life bro like the shit that y'all do out here like that i just love it bro like the way cannabis is used as a a bartering system here, you yes. know what I'm saying? It's fucking incredible. I mean, I do it now, you know what I'm saying? Oh, hey, you I want do. Some weed? It. You know what I'm <laughs> it Will like, work for hash? Yeah, absolutely. Will yeah. work for weed? Like, yeah. you know, my wife doesn't. She don't want to hear that no more. But right, right, for a, right, right, right. when you're when you're getting into it, into the industry, like yeah. that's how you start. Cool. You start working for free, then you work for free bud, free hash. Yeah. And then you work for free travel, airfare, expenses, and then finally you start getting those checks with everything. Yeah. So buddy. it's like I'm on that last step where it's like my wife is like, you know, you need to be getting those checks or else you're not going to this yeah. this deal, you know. So we're on that we're on that last leg of. Wifey knows what's up. She knows what's up. We got a budget to keep. Yeah. You got kids. I got three kids. Yeah. Oh yeah. My dude, daughter no turns ten is. day after tomorrow. Oh nice, dude. My son just turned. Uh, for yesterday oh man isn't it great it's great bro fatherhood is the best we're we're the best bro we're breaking down those stereotypes you know what I oh mean? yeah man successful stoners good dad dad dabs work out work out eat clean yeah bro smoke nope. the cannabis take care of the kids take care of the kids bro. It, it's a story that needs to be told because it, it's, it it's not being told enough and that's why i think sometimes we got to just get a little louder about people like us it's yeah. like hey man Definitely. You know? Definitely, bro. No, that's cool, man. That's cool. That's good, man. Good dad gang. I like it. So, um, let's talk about like the five three on the hash scene. I wanna I wanna know about the hash scene up there. You oh my gosh. Jimmy. I love it. I love and tell, tell my viewers what the five three oh encompasses. What 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 is that? Oh yeah, so we're talking about the five three oh. If you don't have it, you better contact it right now. It's hot. No, I mean that's the thing is like the Emerald Triangle always gets all the love and everything, but it's like, yo, there's some fire in the hills of NorCal that just isn't necessarily Trinity or Humble, but Trinity is actually five three oh. So you know the okay. Trinity is is in there. So I got Square Business Hash. He's he's bringing out the bangers. Um, working with Telos Farms. Okay. Um, just an awesome, super rad, nice dude with fire fire uh rosin just so good and then of course one of my right now probably my favorite hash maker uh globert downey jr with globs tricone collection he's based out of reading um just i mean his stuff i say good hash has legs right so you put it in the index or you put it in a puff co and if it goes past like four cycles and it's still tasting good and the terps haven't degraded then you know that hash has legs. It's the real deal. So these top, I would say only top 10% of these hash makers that I run through the index 
are on that level where you're hitting that button like five, six times and it's still tasting clean. The longevity of the dab flavor, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't. It, some of these guys, 60, 70%, like two cycles and it's already degraded, tasting like poo poo. Yeah, so, I noticed that, man. That's definitely what I've been grading hash on lately. I grade, that's how I grade my hash is like, uh, you're, you're, it's not the first run because maybe there's a lot of people that taste great just on one click on the Puffco. Yeah. But then you click it again and it starts to taste funky. Yeah. That's where I'm like, oh. Uh, burnt, tastes burnt. Yeah. You know? It does. It has the funky flavor. So, you know, Globber Downey Jr., Square Business Hash, uh, Wigs just won um, uh, the Dab Right Cup down in SoCal with nice. the Donnie Burger. So, I mean. Fire. Splash, Splash is up in there in Trinity. Oh, Splash up there? Okay. Hash and Flowers. Um, just, I mean, 530 has some killer hash right now. Uh, and I, I'm just stoked to be friends with these guys and get to, you know, enjoy it. And, of course, being from the hometown, you get to rep the home team. Um, there's nothing like it, you know? Yeah. Hell yeah, bro. I fucking love that. I'm very curious, though. How'd you get your name, bro? <laughs> so where did that emerge okay have you ever heard of the clubhouse app yeah yeah okay so like we when clubhouse came out the cannabis folks like we all coalesced into these cannabis groups and had some like super good close relationships built in there and like for instance rebel grown which we're going to be smoking um nice you know i had grown that before i met dan and then i met dan on clubhouse and we became friends and a lot of these guys um chemo kylie with index labs so that's how i got the the briefcase um brad at guild we all became friends on this clubhouse app and my friend johnny smash he he uh He's part of the Cryo Bro crew, so him he just partnered with Guild. They're just doing this huge new thing where they're able to produce so much uh, raw solventless material using cryo technology. But Johnny Smash, shout out, he gets the credit because we came up with the name Macho Mids like three years ago on the Clubhouse app because we were joking around about like a Wish.com version of Macho Man, you know, that like walks around and is like, I got a cone, you know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, this is mids, you know what I mean? Yeah. And like, that's where it came from. So it's super ironic humor. Cause like I grow regenerative organic cannabis, but so it's the mids with a Z, not a S. So that's gotcha. the kind of funny thing. It's just, it's just being funny. And if you can't, it, it's like going around being like, Oh yeah, I, you know, I got a small dick. <laughs> you know what right, I mean? Right, like, right. <laughs> so and you're fucking hung like a horse, right? It's yeah. Like, <laughs> so it's like, that's it's the kind of deal. Words. It's the play on words. Yeah. And if they don't get it, you know, some people haven't smoked my shit yet. So yeah. it's like, you know, if you don't know, you don't know. But no if you know, right. you know. Right, right, right. For sure. I mean, you've been going for 20 years. And, and explain your process. You said regenerative. Yeah. So, so uh, yeah, dude, living soil, never any pesticides. I don't even really... Where I'm at high desert, I don't even really need neem oil. I, I just use ladybugs. Oh, wow. Nice. And, uh, you know, knock on wood, is it's pretty pest-free in the area that I grow. So, you know, we use living soil, um, regenerative practices. I put a lot of biodiversity in the soil. So we collect soil from Shasta, from Humboldt, in the redwoods, getting underneath, getting some good biodiversity, bringing it over to our soil, introducing it. I wow. forage for mushrooms every year and, and make my own mushroom teas. We use chicken eggs, um, organic bone meal, all that stuff. So just really keeping those beds alive fire, um, and thriving. And then mountain clean water, Mount Shasta water. Ooh, that's and good then stuff. mix it with the sun at a 4,300 foot elevation. As long as you can keep them not frozen in the last part of the harvest, it's some prime prime terroir uh mm -hmm. appalachian territory yeah yeah it's the uh, microclimate yeah microclimate yo i learned that word when i moved to california bro i didn't know we don't know what the fuck microclimates are in jersey we just have <laughs> jersey fucking weather bro like it's it's just the same everywhere you don't go to a different part of the state and you're like in a different fucking climate that's the, one the of the zones. coolest things about california man 
it's just such a zones. big fucking space you know what i'm saying yeah and you got to know how to grow in each zone yeah, so i yeah, gr- yeah. i would exactly. grow a different i would grow exactly. different lineages if i was over on the coast with that humidity so yeah. because i'm high up with high elevation i can do these big afghani cushes without worrying worry about, about bud rot yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. you don't have to worry about the mold as much so i go with the big chunky colas because it's dry, you know, you got to keep that temperature and that uh, humidity check during the cure. But as long as you're on top of that, you got some big old buds. Yeah, hell yeah. I'll fuck with that, bro. Um, I heard you mention on another podcast I saw you on, there's like a fucking community of macho man guys, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, and how do you... Like, how did you get recruited into the squad? Like, this is a fucking interesting story that I want my people to know, bro. Okay. Sorry you had to repeat it, bro. No, it's no, no, fire. no, man. It's it's a crowd pleaser. So, um, you know, I've been doing the Macho Man thing before I mixed it with cannabis. I oh, did really? It. Yeah, Tell I did it. More. I did it for, like, Halloween and okay. for, like, pep rallies when I was a teacher. And, like, okay. just, just as a funny gag, people loved it when I did it. So I would show up and... It was just fun, right? Yeah. And then looks fun. It, it is like that's my favorite wrestler of all time. So yeah. like it's super okay. fun. And so basically, once I turned it into the cannabis thing, I was already doing hosting and dab tending and stuff and cannabis yeah. sommelier stuff, but I wasn't dressed up. Yeah. And and I saw, I just saw an opportunity. I'm like, dude, I love to create vibes wherever I go and create an experience for the people that are at that event or at that venue or whatever. Sure. And that for me was a way to elevate it and get a laugh um, and just make it like a little crazy because I love weird stuff. Like, I I don't know, part of being a a stoner is like you just like to get the giggles and see random shit. So if you're at an event and you see some guy walk by dressed as a macho man, I would be like, Fuck yeah! Yeah, right. That's so, right. That's mentally what I said. Exactly. So Fuck yeah, I'm like, brother. I'm like, yeah, let's do it. So I started doing it uh, in public, I guess, on that page. Yeah. And then some of the macho men noticed. I guess some some somebody posted something and they noticed, and so they came in and they recruited me, and they were like, hey, uh, we think you might be able to join our super elite like closed group of macho man impersonators and i was like oh tell me more and they're like there's an audition process you have to like come in and audition and i was like i was like okay and they wanted you know you do your impression and then they put you through the gauntlet of like yeah all the quiz questions like what's his real name you know and it, it was just it got really yeah. in depth and then at the end of it, they're like, okay, we would like to formally offer you invitation to join the Council of Machos. And wow. I was like, oh, yes, of course. Like, oh, yeah, brother, sign me up. Yeah, undeniable. So so these guys, yeah. they're on the same wavelength, no right? Doubt. Like, we'll, we'll talk to each other during the day. I'll get, like, a call, and, you know, and – it's just like this. You can go in and out of it, but if they start off the call in macho, then I'm going to recall to them in macho. Yeah. Oh, yeah, brother. How's your day going? Yeah, my day's going real good. I got a cup of coffee in the big time. Yeah. And it'll just riff. And then now, <laughs> now I have oh, all these man. companies and my yeah. homies in cannabis yeah. that do it. So then I get a voicemail from, you know, like my homie and he's like, hey, brother, just wanted to let you know my depths are coming in hot. And, you know, it's like, it, it's super fun. I get a kick out of it. Bro, I fucking find it hard not to do the voice when I talk to you, bro. Like, it's just so it's, contagious. It's a natural thing. It's a natural my, thing. Bro. A lot of my friends like to talk to me in the voice. My buddy Trap House Coda, shout out. He's a talented rapper over there in Virginia. He'll, he'll leave me a voice message in the macho voice. I love it. Come on now. I've even figured out how to write brother in a text message and make it sound like it came from either Macho Man or Hulk Hogan himself. Yeah, you got to add the extra R's. Yeah, the extra R's and I use the U instead of mm-hmm. the fucking R. Er. You heard? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, so I'm not telling this fucking guy to write brother. Yeah, no, Come if you see me write brother on social media, hella on R's. Instagram, <laughs> there's hella R's. It's You can read it in that voice. Brother, 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 yeah. yeah. Um. How much cocaine do you think the real macho man used to do, bro? 
So well, funny. okay, so the story goes that him and <clears throat> him and Terry Bollea, aka Pukester Hulk Hogan. No, I love you, Hulk. No, I don't. Um, <laughs> so he, no, I do, I do. Shout out Hulk Hogan. It's cool. He's still alive. He's still doing it. So he got he through all is, that bro. cocaine use and and came out the other side. Unfortunately, Macho Man did not. He died yeah. uh, uh, quite a while back. I think it was 2011, uh, if you I remember correctly. Star. But yeah, rest in peace, Macho. Um, the rumor was they would drink two pots of coffee together and okay. then do lines of coke before oh, each match. Man. Yeah, so before each match. Uh, that's a, a pot of coffee each and then some some racky rackies of the yaki yakis. So how you doing? Who are you doing? Who are you going skiing for the weekend, brother? Oh, yeah. Don't be looking at Miss Elizabeth with those lustful eyes, brother. You know what I mean? He got a little paranoid. I don't know how much blow that oh, Are we God. allowed to talk about that? No, that's great, bro. That's great. You know your history. You know your history. I am. A, I did I did minor in history there, JP. So, yeah. You know. Shout yeah. out UCSD. Go Tritons. You feel me? Where'd you go to school? Uh, University of California, San Diego. San Diego, yeah. yeah. Our our mascot UCSD, is yeah. Merman, uh, Ariel's dad from uh, Little Mermaid. So oh, I shit. played rugby for UCSD Merman Triton. Triton. We His had the Triton, Triton, and we yeah, had the did. Mermaid tail. It's on our rugby gear. It's pretty rad. <laughs> Fire, bro! I love it. So you all about creating the vibes, right? I have a question for you. I know, like the California cannabis space. And its consumption laws are kind of crazy. Yeah. How do you feel about that whole space with the California consumption? Where the fuck can we go smoke a joint, bro? Yes. Oh, you know my gosh. I mean? So shout out, shout out CGO. Shout out all the guys that uh, are going up and showing up to the meetings, yeah. man. If you want to make 11, change 11 in this Club, world, yeah. CGO, you got to yeah. you gotta show up to these stakeholder meetings and you got to make your voice heard, just like we were talking about as dads and everything. Yeah. Um, we have to be proactive because if you're not proactive – uh, someone else is going to be writing that story, that narrative, right? Yeah. And it's probably going to be the people that don't want you having a space. And, you know, my thing has always been um, I've always dreamed of a space that wasn't a nightclub uh, atmosphere where it's just booze and, you know, loud music. I've always dreamed of having a space where you could enjoy psychedelics, enjoy cannabis, good art, good music. You can have a conversation. Nobody talks about how they're going to change the world for the better while they're getting fucked up drunk yeah. in the club or the bar or everything yeah. so it's like i'm not saying there's not a time to do that get turned up on a wedding i'm not yeah. saying that i'm just saying having an alternative that's like a healthier uh lifestyle yeah. is something i crave and so i'm really proud of my friends that are out there trying to get that done because um that's we do cool. need spaces right and we do need it to be um a safe place for people to enjoy and the art mixed with the music mixed with you know, all the visuals, like I have a vision of how I see consumption being brought online. And it's like so far I've been to some places uh, consumption wise that aren't there yet. But I've also been to some trap mansions that are doing it very yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. So I want to bring all that together and be able to have a place where it's like, OK, yeah, Maybe bro. you play a pay a corking service to bring your own weed, but then you can smoke your own weed in there because it's like, I get it. If, if you're not buying their weed, they don't want you smoking weed. But you go to a restaurant or, or a, a nice cafe, they let you do a corking fee. So there's some things where I'm like, OK, we can we can change it and make it a win win for everybody. Yeah. But we got to get it out there because it's like it's already I mean, first step, get all the guys out of prison for nonviolent cannabis offenders. But then step two is getting us spaces like, and we can do them both at the same time. Yeah. I mean, but those are my two big social justice things is consumption and releasing all nonviolent cannabis offenders. Yeah, man, that those two need to happen ASAP, ASAP Rocky. Like yesterday. Like yesterday. Like yesterday, brother. Brother. <laughs> so, uh, so speaking of, um, Cannabis consumption events. There's a fucking monster event coming up, bro. How are you feeling about this hash hole holiday, my guy? Oh my CGO goodness. fucking create a monster, I feel like, bro. The the literally the third fucking cannabis holiday is being born this year. Mm -hmm. So you take four twenty, yeah, you add it to seven ten, yep, 
and you get 11.30. You got damn so, right. So, I mean, you, you at 7.10. Remember when 7.10? Like, it was always like 4.20, and then it was like 4.20 and 7.10. And now it's about to be 4.20, 7.10, 11.30. Yeah. So, and it's even like... 11.30, when you look at it, it's like you could fit the hash holes inside. The li- it, it's like the numbers, it's they numerology. Just it just works. Um, numerology, yeah. We had, we had so much fun on the island. Like, it was such a vibe yeah. that, like, I... Man. I can't believe... Great time. I can't believe how... F- that, uh, that will go down as, like, one of the funnest events I've been to, for yeah. sure. And to be able to see Water Boys do their first ever live performance... And smoke the smokable art that we had MJ ruled up for it. I put my hash in it. Oh, fuck. And then we had, you know, um, Zodix and Flora and Flame um, and, you know, Lodestar. They put their flower, they sponsored it. So it was super culture shit. Cause nice. it's like before that, like we, we reached out and uh, at Zodix, I had just met that summer and they donated that flower to do that. So huge shout out to them for that. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Zodix, the homie Chris. Yep. And the crew, yeah. And we're going to be having more. So the, this time around, there's going to be a whole uh, gallery of creative roles that we're getting sponsored by different brands and different artists. So we're going to have Weavers, MJ, June the Goon, Ooh, nice. um, Grasshopper, just like all the best in the game, really. Nice, uh, Stay Green from coming out from Florida with Brothers Broadleaf. Ooh, um, very nice. So we're going to – it's going to be turned up. And the cool part is like our little – activation is right by my sponsors um flower mill uh, brothers broadleaf we're all going to be like right there our booths there so it, it's, oh, nice. it's going to be super fun we nice. got videography set up it's it's going to be rad fire yeah that's fire i'm like wrestling with it can i go i can't i can't because i might have a wedding i might not so i'm like you gotta oh, go man, to brother <laughs> i know and it's on a fucking monday bro it's on a monday, monday in it's LA, on a thursday dog. isn't it's on it a thursday I think it's on the Thursday of uh, MJ check, BizCon. Yeah. Date check. Yeah, that's what it was, bro. I was supposed. To, yeah, that's what I was. At supposed midnight, to it's my shit. birthday, so you definitely would be celebrating my Remember birthday. Thursday, birthday. yeah. No, it's on a Thursday. I'm tripping. It's on a Thursday. It's on a Thursday. Yeah, Thursday. Thursday, December first, Liddy in the city with our boy uh, in Vegas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Bro, shit is yep. going down. So Cannabis wait, wait, and wait. Chris is going to be throwing a huge uh, sesh right on my Ooh, birthday. I'm going to be there celebrating that with him. So nice. we're the Belt Brothers. Yeah, you guys are the Belt we Brothers. We tag team, dude. We tag team champs this summer. Yeah. It was out of control. Oh, did you? Yeah. Fucking Hulkster was there. Hulkster, I saw that. everything. I don't even want to get into the Hulkster Did you guys story. fight? Ooh, no, no, dude. Shout out to Hulk. Here's the deal. <laughs> I was worried when Hulk was like, being like, okay, I'm going to have my cannabis brand. I was freaked out because I was like, okay, white label job. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it turns out he's partnered with Sunburn Cannabis, who <laughs> one of their main guys is like the chem, like Mike Knee, like Ken, like these godfather of chem, like wow. is, is doing that. So then I'm a huge chem dog fan. Same. So then I was like, okay. He's doing it right. He's got okay. some real he's got some real gunners down there in yeah. Florida. And then I checked out the sunburn. And you just know when you see people cultivating on the right level, you can just be like, okay, yeah. I, I haven't smelled it yet, but after seeing enough of your practices and, and, and who you have surrounding you, yeah. I'm like, I gotta I gotta go out there, check out the grow and everything. But man, I, I, I work for Ric Flair. I'd be glad to do a collab with the Hulkster, bring the mega powers back together. Yeah, bro. I, I would do it. Especially yeah. if it's got Ken Dog involved. Yeah. Like, you know. It's only right. It's only right. It's only it goes right. together like PB and J, dude. You goddamn right. You goddamn right. Fuck yeah. So what would you what would you give somebody some advice uh, that's in your space in the cannabis world? I know this is a niche market you're in. But yeah. like what advice would you give to somebody in your lane? Ooh, in my lane. Ooh. You don't have to go down the Randy set. No, Marshall no, that's my it, lane. It is, if though. You're, if Maybe you're just, in yeah, cannabis yeah, and you're going to be a character, there you go, a character. prepare go. yourself. Like You have to know what character you're going to be, and you have to know that people are going to misjudge you, right? So yeah. people are going to be like, oh, that guy's such a Chad. He's probably working for MSOs. He's a rich kid. Yeah. Or 
he's a broke like get it straight which one am i am i a broke kid am i a rich kid like yeah. you, oh you get to you know he's just paying to do or no he's broke he doesn't have anything he's just fronting like yeah. okay well which one is it like yeah, yeah, you yeah. know but so no matter what you do people are gonna hate on you if you're doing something and all these other people aren't doing things it's just natural for them to jealous get jealous yeah. and throw hate so get ready because if you want to be a personality and you want to be out there putting yourself out there and really branding yourself, you're going to put a huge target on your back. So be ready. Have a tough skin because not only is it hard to be in cannabis, it, it chews people up, spits them out. Yeah, uh, being in cannabis and then drawing attention to yourself as a character, it, it, it elevates it to a whole nother level. Yeah. So like, I never thought I'd be dealing with some of the things I've dealt with. And it's like, you know, you don't know me, man. You, like, right. and it's like, I'm just a little guy too. Right. Like right. I don't, I'm not, I'm not some baller. I don't have some brand that's like, you know, recognize some like when these people that have like 60, 70, 80,000 followers, like making a meme, I'm like, dude, what are you doing, dude? I'm not hurting nobody. Like, right, right. come on, man. Like you're breaking my balls. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm trying yeah. to bring, bring the nice back to cannabis. That's cool, man. Um, just be, you know, whatever you do, just be kind to people. No doubt. Uh, you know, we were, there's enough pieces of the pie for us all to eat you know a definitely, slice bro. so definitely i always try to look at it as like a collaborative effort that to me is kind of like the yeah. culture is like we're working together you do you i'm gonna try to shout you out now if you're yeah. a shitty human being that's a different story but if the person's a good person and they're just a different style than you like just we're chill bro we're, yeah. we're supposed to be the stoners we're supposed to be showing people to stay chill and be cool to people and yeah. be kind and all that stuff so yeah, stop trying to be a weed rapper, bro. Like, just, just, <laughs> we're growing medicine. You're either growing it, you're distributing it, you're selling it, you're repping it. Just like remember that it is, it should be collaborative. You know what I'm saying? I've been hearing a lot of that lately. Everybody's like, man, we gotta bring these collabs back. Why is everybody beefing and funking and fucking trying to trying to? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, I know what you mean. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Ooh, brother. Oh, bam, bam. <laughs> you know, motherfuckers with speakers and shit. You feel me? Yeah. But, but, but hey, what are you gonna do? You know what I mean? Hey, you sometimes know. it's on site, right? That's the but, deal. Uh, is copacetic. I keep everything at all chill, the events bro. we're at. We keep it copacetic. Yeah. Unless someone does something, and then that flips the switch no in doubt, the macho no man, doubt. and that's a different story. But. For the most part, that shit usually doesn't happen because I'm having yeah. fun. We're laughing. We're smoking some weed. Yeah, man. You know, that negative energy seems to go to a negative place. Yeah. And if you're bringing a positive energy with you, it just kind of repels the yeah, negative energy. Exactly. So, like, our events, CGO, there were no fights on no, the man. island. Come on, goofy. man. You look goofy if you had brought that many positive people being there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And who belong. on earth would put, you know, two rivals right it just seemed like it's yeah. like if i was planning an event i would be like oh let's get this guy here this guy here keep everything copacetic you know but anyway gotta separated gotta keep them separated. separated you feel me yeah that song has been on my mind so much lately bro i, I gotta did. get it out I gotta i'm get it a out. i'm a huge fan of that what was the other song i was talking to my son the other day so there was keeping separated what was the other joint pretty the fly offspring? for a white no, 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 guy no, 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 no first album bro first album offspring it was, it was talking about his, his girl. The kids are all right? No, no, no. So it was Keep Them Separated, and then that, there was the other song they had. Oh, where she's always, like, yeah, coming home to him yes, and everything, bro, yes. and he feels like a piece of shit. That's self-esteem? Yes. Oh, self-esteem? Self-esteem. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. not how it goes. No, but. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't catch the macho man singing. No, sir. <laughs> Although I did do a musical dressed as Willy Wonka on Mushrooms. Whoa, let's talk about that. Wait, say that again. What'd you do? Wait, what? pause. <laughs> pause. No, I'm just joking. We'll we, talk we, about it. We can it. take that out. No, no, it's all good. We, we're going to talk about it or talk about it off No, we, we talk about it. We talk about it. Okay, you can't just so, drop that on us and keep going. So, Mr. you know, Savage. let's <laughs> let's start with the psychedelic journey, okay? Yeah, so I'm here with Lucid Psychedelics. I do creative for Lucid Psychedelics. Okay. We're the first uh, psychedelic brand to sponsor a headline musical tour in the United States. We sponsored the Fortunate Youth Let the Good Times Roll Tour with right. Ellie Mack and Eureka Sound. Um, we have legal functional mushrooms here in the United States. Where it's legal, we have psilocybin and psilocin-based uh, products in Amsterdam and Negril, Jamaica. And uh, the nice. pipeline is ready to go 
once these laws, as you know, these laws are in California about to change. Yeah. Um, we're ready to go. We have a lifestyle brand with clothing and everything like that. Um, but yeah, so part of that is um, I did a musical. My daughter likes to do acting. We did a community theater. It was Willy Wonka. And on the last night, it's like I've done Thursday, Friday, Saturday show. Last night, the stage has gigantic mushrooms. It has trippy paintings and all this stuff. I was like, yeah. fuck it. We're doing this. What? Two, two gram, two and a half grams of mushrooms. Yeah. And let me tell you, it was one of the most magical experiences of my life. Really? <laughs> like, you it was really walking on mushrooms. And I had to sing. Oh, wow. Can and, you sing? You got bars, bro? You got pipes? No, no man. <laughs> no, you don't want to hear me sing. Like, I'm not going to do it on this podcast. No, 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 we won't do that. I'll send you the video of the performance. We'd love that. Because I was, I was vocally trained, like, trying to pop it off the top of the noggin. Not a good look. But back Ooh. then, I had it all memorized. Okay, gotcha. You got know you, what I mean? Gotcha. But, uh, and it, it wasn't bad, but it just wasn't, like, Mariah Carey or whatever. No doubt. No doubt. You didn't, you didn't bring it home. Didn't, didn't. But, but you made your point. Hey, I, yeah. the acting outweighed the singing. You, you know what I mean? The personality of Willy yeah. Wonka really shined through, and I think me being uh, on mushrooms was a huge part of that. And that I just me was a shout out to um, to the sports. Shout out to the Hyphen Network out there. You know, yeah. it's like uh, I did seven years in child protective services. Ended up getting a pretty bad case of PTSD. And uh, literally, psychedelics saved my life, wow. um, turned my life around. The PTSD had me drinking more than I should have been drinking. Yeah. It had me depressed, suicidal. Yeah. And uh, literally, uh, Mike Tyson, dude. Mike Tyson, like, I saw that video one day, and I was like, I haven't done mushrooms, you know, since college or whatever. And uh, I was like, I should try that. And I did. And it brought a healing level like when college i wasn't doing it with intention or anything like that uh this time around i i did it with intention yeah. and took a mega dose and it the next day i <clears throat> i went off the drinking like literally it was a whole ordeal my friend had died and it, it was a whole thing but sure i i was like at, at that moment it wasn't just something that was like fun to do it, I, I finally got it that yeah. it is this medicine that can do amazing things if you have depression, if you have anxiety, if you have PTSD, if you have bipolar. And it just changed my view on everything. And since then, I, I'm like, I've always been a plant medicine guy, um, but now I'm a plant and myco medicine guy. Nice, dude. I've heard that story uh, a couple more than a couple times. You know what I'm saying? The breakthroughs you can get. Um, I've recently had a nice breakthrough on some mushrooms. Um, it was supposed to be micro. It was a little more like a micro macro, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Not what I signed up for, but like, you know, I had some breakthroughs. We created some new synapses in the brain. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And like, I, it, it showed me that there's some shit that needs to come to the surface and I need to revisit with a, a bigger dose and like really send it and be intentional. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. And that's the big thing is you don't realize how much you're stuffing down. Yeah. until until you're kind of in that space and yeah. then you come back around and then you're like i need i need a second round at this because i didn't realize how much i just dug up on that first go around yeah and then i need to complete this there and then go. when you complete it with that with that next journey it's like a little bookend it comes together and you're able to like give it that space and then move on and it's like a huge weight is lifted yeah, off of you definitely so bro. it's it's i always tell people it's not cannabis it's not just like smoke a joint like there this stuff could change your life so yeah. it's like there's lots of different ways to do it some people are into micro dosing and stuff but there's many benefits i just would say educate yourself you know learn learn about the 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 fungus among us you know do you feel me? I like how you said that. Yeah, man. I feel like that's where I'm at, bro. I feel like I'm at this chapter I need to revisit. And then I think I'm going to go to uh, Lady Aya. Nice. And do an ayahuasca ceremony. You know what I'm saying? I feel like that's next. I don't think I need that just yet, but I feel like it's starting to call me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you'll know. I know. I know. That's why I, I always yeah, tell people, know, know. you know? And it's I like know. one of those things I can't believe, like, you know, there's this whole market now of for years I've guided people i've taken people on journeys i put my little wizard hat on and 
you know, make sure they got good fruit and water and oh, comfy cool. blanket and shit. Now there's people making money doing that, like like with licenses and oh, like no charging shit, 15, 15 grand. No one, if anybody's listening, if you charge $15,000 to, to trip sit, I want to talk to you because yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't agree with that. No, that man. If you're going to call yourself a medicine person yeah. or like, that ain't it, dude. Cover the overhead, bro. Don't try to kill me. Yeah, you know exactly. It's yeah. like, what's happening on this $15,000 trip you're going yeah, on? Like, bro. well, we use glacier water that's never been touched by human hands. <laughs> <And it's> like, <laughs> and uh, the bark uh, that we right. use at the barbecue has been blessed. So it, right. it's like, come on, <laughs> come dude. On, dude. Like, I'll, I'll trip Cut sit you for shit. like 300 bucks. I'll get you a charcuterie board, some, some jerky, you know <laughs> like, some fresh fruit. I'll bust out macho whenever you need a good laugh. You uh, feel me? Well, and that's the thing is like, if you're trip sitting someone, you give them what they need. You ask them what they need. Yeah. And then you try your best to give them what they need yeah. and make them feel safe. So yeah. it's like, for some people, it's <clears throat> being in a house. For other people, they want to be out in nature. Yeah. and. I love being in nature. I love taking someone to like a waterfall and just, you know, I'm standing there with you for safety. So yeah. if you're like feeling like you're getting on slippery rocks or something, you yeah. know what I mean? Like you got someone that's stone cold sober. Yeah. I'm not shrooming at this point. So. Okay, got you, got you. So, you know, it's just, I'm just there to take you're care of you. the guide, man. Yeah, the guide. guide. Yeah, I, I like love it. guiding people. That's fire, bro. So like, what's the, what's the future hold for Macho Miz, bro? Like what's the next five, 10 years look like? What's the goal? What do you have planned, my friend? Yeah, so I mean, in the in the master plan is as we roll out consumption, I want to have a say in that. I want to be a part of this group that is kind of the trailblazers, right? Like, look at CGO, look at Bruno, mm -hmm. like people that are doing this cannabis. Chris, um, we're trying to take our culture back, right, from the Chads and the Brads oh, yeah. and everything, and uh, I. I I want to work with people that are on that mission, also on a mission to do something for good. So my goal, honestly, my number one goal right now in working is providing for my family and also working towards ending the persecution and the drug war um, against plant medicine. No one should be in prison for a plant, nonviolent crime. Yeah. We need to get those people out. Like yesterday, I don't feel good doing consumption, you know, having fun, hosting these cool parties, knowing that there's people that this is completely legal now that are in prison while we're out here having fun. It will not feel completely good to me until that situation is taken care of. So that's my number one goal. Um, number two goal is, you know. What's up, guys? Just want to take a quick second to shout out my sponsors over at Grove Bags. Listen, Grove Bags are hands down the best way to store your cannabis. Forget jars, forget mylars. Nobody does it like Grove Bags. Listen, it's a six layer, non static bag. State of the art technology. It's going to keep your weed fresher for longer. It keeps your cannabis between 58 and 62% humidity at all times, the optimal humidity to store cannabis. It's gonna increase your shelf life, help prevent mold, weight reduction. Hands down, it's the best product out there. We don't use anything but Grove Bags at Good Pizza. And especially if your product is in stores, we all know there's some shelf life issues at the stores. This is gonna keep your product lasting longer on those shelves. So when your customer goes to try it, it's gonna be fresh cannabis. Listen, if you wanna store your cannabis the proper way, use Grove Bags. Use promo code PIZZA with three Z's. That's P-I-Z-Z-Z-A. Tell them good pizza sent you. Financially, get myself to the point where it's like up and running and I have a business model. I'm still working on getting my merchandise, my website, all that stuff. But yeah, I want to have a voice, you know, in this community um, when it comes to consumption. You know, everybody has their little thing that they do. Yeah, yeah, um, no doubt. I'm not a roller. I'm not a pro roller. I've got gorilla hands lumpy joints all that stuff yeah, yeah, no but i got a cool rig that my homie made and it's super good technology and i bring that with me and i got dab rigs and i'm happen to be friends with some of the best rollers in the game yeah so it's like one of those things where it's like we all have our little you know different veggie that we bring to the salad yeah and then when you put the salad together it's just amazing so it's like we all have our little niche and i'm trying to fill that niche of you know humor doing something good for the culture um and and 
educating people about plant medicine and the benefits of plant and myco medicine. Yeah. So that's the goal is to get that's that dope, word yeah. out and to, you know, I'm not looking to be super rich, but it'd be nice to have a little heady glass and, you know, it'd be nice to set my kids up for college and stuff. So it's yeah. like, I'm not trying to be a Brad or a Chad and just make all this money yeah. off of people or like shill brands that I don't fuck with. Like yeah. I shill brands that I fucking use, you know what I mean? Like, Brands that I love their flower, brands that I love their technology, uh, good people, you know? And, like, I don't care if you're a big brand. Like, the Tyson people, they've been so good to me. Like, really? Yeah. And so it's, like, people are, oh, you know, he's he hangs out with the Tyson. He does the Tyson stuff, and they're just MSO. And it's, like, man, whatever. You, you, you can say whatever you want, yeah. but it's, like, those people literally gave me a free place to stay at a mansion they gave me free weed. Like they treated me good with respect. Like I'm going to rep them and I don't care what anybody yeah. says. So, I mean, come on, bro. Like, let's, let's be real. Like any, any brand out here that's fronting on MSO, like you wouldn't want to be MSO if the situation was right. Right. If the people aligned, right. You found good cultivators, good washers, good fill in the blank for whatever it is your product needs yeah. to, to go to the market. Like, come on, bro. Yeah. That's what you're trying to stay in California? Yeah. There's no fucking money here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, so and, that's, and that's haters, where that bro. negativity yeah, comes yeah, from man. is, you know, a haters. lot of mom and pop and small, small business yeah. get shut out. And I'm never wanting them to no, get shut bro. out at all. But it's like one of those things where it's like we're we're this it's going to be an interesting decade for us because we're going to see this we're seeing it right now, these birthing pains of, of what's coming next yeah. and a whole change in the whole, I, I did almost a decade with Toyota, uh, in grassroots marketing and cannabis can't be marketed right now because of the laws. So when yeah. that floodgate opens and you got the real ability of the Chad's and the Brad's to come in from wall street with the hedge fund guys, yeah. they're going to ravage <clears throat> us. Yeah. They're going to like, it, we're bad. not even gonna stand a chance so we have to get small lean and smart with how yeah. we do things yeah and we have to huddle up around each other in the community in the culture because those guys are just chomping at the bit they see it coming they see federal coming and they're just like oh, no, bro, this is gonna be so good yeah and we're we're all dying out here you yeah, we're all dying I mean? and like, fighting each other bro like and we're fighting each other and they're just laughing like oh these guys ain't gonna change they can't yeah. even stick together yeah, so us. if if culture is this little flame right now, it's just raining hard. There's a storm, and there's people like CGO, people like Bruno, you, me. We're huddling, just trying to keep the rain off that flame yeah. so it doesn't die. Yeah, bro. And and that's what it's all about is trying to preserve that and take that back from these guys. Because if we don't, it's gonna be bad news, and it's just gonna be the Bud Light of weed everywhere. Yeah. It's just gonna be mid city, mid city, the boofy. Oh. <laughs> we don't want that. A shit storm of mids, brother. We're not going to grow that because it doesn't yield well. Or we're not going to press it because it's a low yielder. Yeah. We're just going to press the stuff that is just gooey and just like we can get tons up. You know what I mean? Like yep. some of those like those low yielders are where the hidden fruit is. That's right. You know? That's right. That's a yo, That was a good fucking analogy, bro. What's going on right now in the game and what's to come, bro? I, I feel that, man. That was good shit. That's good shit. So let me ask you this, boss. Mr. Savage, Mr. Dabbage, what are you call what are you calling bullshit on out in the game right now? Is there any myths you could debunk or you know what I'm saying? What you calling bullshit on out there, bro? Oh man, bullshit. Okay. If it uh if it is of a unnatural flavor or smell or color. That's some bullshit, dude. Some bullshit. That's definitely some bullshit, bro. <laughs> like, like, there's some, like, freaking Fruity Pebbles looking shit, like, on, sparkling. Bro. And, like, so, yeah, like, if... And these people don't know because I just saw it the other day on Instagram. It This thing looked like it had been jizzed on by an alien and yeah. then, like, rolled around in dollar store glitter. You yeah, know, yeah. And, and there's like hundreds of comments like, where can I get that? Yo, where is this? This looks yeah. so fire. And I'm just like, yo, people, what? So that's some bullshit. Yeah. We're, the spray terps and the Instagram filters on yeah, the bro. weed. It's like make weed great again. Please. Just green, you know, just a natural color, you know, maybe a little purple hue. But but we're not talking about sparkle. 
The sparkles is crazy. I Rainbow saw, I know pony about, sparkles, bro. dude. It was a rapper that had that shit too, bro. Like a rapper I thought knew what the fuck was going on. I don't know. So okay, so you saw the same thing. Same man. shit, bro. I was a little disappointed, man. But uh, what are you gonna do? Hey, that's the uh, education component. Education. So education. it's like you don't want to dog. You don't want to dog on them and, and try to just educate, dude. Just that's be like, it. hey, you know, that's there's hey, maybe some... you shouldn't smoke that, pal. It's a little cancerous. It saying? looks it's a little, little shiny, cancerous. Guy. It's a little too shiny little for me. Cancerous, dude. No doubt, bro. Let me ask you this: as a grower or a consumer, what are your quality check marks, check boxes for quality cannabis? Okay, so the check boxes for me for quality cannabis. So I'll, I'll try to rank them in order. So yeah, sure. Uh, first off is flavor and effect. So it tasting good on the lips, and then the effect are like for me the most important things mm -hmm. so bag appeal not so much smell not so much because i've seen a lot of flour that didn't smell for shit looked like a, a a drowned dead rat and yet when you grind it up and you smoke it it tastes amazing and you're floored and you're like what the f this came from this yeah so it's like for me it's the flavor and effect are number one um, then comes the smell. Like I, I, I like I like something terpy coming out, you know. Uh, oh, yeah. But good weed doesn't always have the loudest terps. That's not the end all be all. And then the last one is is you know the looks of it. Um, good bag of peel is nice. Yeah, it, it's cool. But yeah. for me, it's the flavor and effect um, that take the cake. Yeah, I'm with that. I like it. I like it. You got any weird skills you care to share with us outside of being macho man? <laughs> or any life I do hacks? do a pretty good impersonation, JP. No, um, I do do some voices. I do... Uh, yeah, I would do the Arnold. Yeah, we're going. It's me, Arnold Sportsenegger. We get the pump, the pre-workout, the vascularity. Yeah, so the get in the chopper. So no, I, I do some of those. But... Um, <gasps> That wasn't the oh, skill. I got shit. this email. Sorry, it took so long. No, you're good, that bro, email. you're good, bro. So I was Stop writing that man. email last night, and I was I thinking, usually get like, them at the buzzer. What's, what's my talent? And I'm like, okay, here's a good one. I have, so, you know, in the last few years, or actually my whole life, I don't know what it is, but I always finagle VIP bracelets. Like, I always get VIP stuff, really? right? But when I was in college, if there's ever a time when I don't get VIP, I take the greatest pleasure. I get such a boner for like sneaking into like VIP areas yeah. or backstage stuff. Yeah, like yeah. I, there has never been a concert I couldn't get into. There's never been a club I couldn't get into. Like I have really? snuck in like every single time and I will get to the point where I will, I will Photoshop a badge. I'll do whatever. Like, yeah, I love it. It's being somewhere you're not supposed to be. Yeah. Is just like <laughs> gets me super hyped, and you know the thing is, is like now I go backstage and it's like it's all arranged because it's like I'm with fortunate youth, so it's like I'm on the list. Sure. But like even if I wasn't, it's all about that confidence of just pretending like you're supposed to be there. Nobody yeah. will ever ask. Yeah, <laughs> they never yeah. ask. And if you have some weed, it definitely helps. Oh yeah, because it's always like I'm the weed guy. I'm yeah, just the weed guy, and they're like. The we it's not legal uh, dude i'm with the band you know <laughs> with the band what are you gonna do yo i'll give you some hacks i got from uh my boy bally joe's episode which was a psychedelic episode you should check it out it's got a company called cruzies nice um shout out to all the psychonauts you feel me he said uh this is how you get into a concert bro you either get a stack of pizzas nobody yes. fronts on the pizza guy or a ladder yep. find a ladder and just walk in with the ladder and see you're looking for joe Yep. You know what I'm saying? Who's 100 gonna the fucking ladder? You got to bring... You, somebody ordered a fucking ladder. Yeah. Nobody's just walking into a fucking... I mean... I mean, maybe you, you're a fucking macho man. Well, you literally, probably this weapon right here of having this belt on yeah. and, like, the whole thing, I you're can go right anywhere. In. I can walk anywhere. And the thing is, is, like, it took me a while to get the confidence to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because at first, you just... You see all the people that are giving you the mean mug. So, like, when I was at Emerald Cup... Mm -hmm. Like, when I was on Brad's yacht, like, those were all the home team crew. Like, we all laugh about this shit. We think it's hilarious. I, I've been doing this with my homies in cannabis before this shit even, like, happened. Yeah. So, like, I'm with them. Once I go off that boat into the main hall, dude, it's so uncomfortable. People are like, who the fuck is this guy? Like, yeah. it, it's yeah, like yeah. you really, like, pissed in their Cheerios or yeah. something. It's like, lighten up, people. 
freaking emerald cup we're all doing mushrooms and staring at the disco ball in a little bit anyway yeah, so yeah, just yeah. chill out like yeah. you know and there's a few people one guy was dressed as a disco ball he had the suit with the mirrors on it so i'm like there's people that do it so come on now i just was like i was like i felt way more comfortable in my skin on that boat though because my wife had to walk with me and she's like in a nice outfit and like she's like people are staring <laughs> i'm like yeah well i'm in a fur coat like you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, what are you going to do? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. What boat are you talking about at Emerald Cup? I'm trying to oh, so out. at Emerald Cup, my buddy Brad, he owns the Empress. Um, and, you know, Gil, he's the head of Guild Extracts. And okay. they, they hired him to bring the yacht right up next to the convention, the little hangar where they held the awards. So oh, his, yacht, got you. his yacht was the VIP area. Oh, it was, it was on a trailer. No, it was no. in the water. In the water. Okay, fuck. I didn't know there's water over there. Yeah, like, it was on cut? the... Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, it was on the water this year. Okay. And so he brought that over there, and then they're going to give him, like, a huge free space at the Harvest Ball. So it was, like, got a it. win-win situation. Got it, got um, it. That's pretty cool. But, yeah, it's super fun. That was actually... That yacht is the first time I ever worked, got paid in cannabis, was the first event I ever worked was on that yacht on nice. 420... Two and, a, two and a half years ago. Okay. Um, and so the very special memories there. First job I ever had was with Guild Extracts and 710 Labs. We were on a Fire. yacht, 420, serving dabs. It was like, that was the moment I was like, no, this is what I want to do for a living. Yeah. Like, that's cool, man. Yeah. Screw being a parenting coach. You feel me? <laughs> this is, folks, this is what it looks like when you're following your passions. You want to do, get paid for what you love to do. This guy right here. 100 percent i'm yeah. i'm I'm like literally right on the cusp of like what i've wanted for like my whole life and i'm like right there i just gotta push myself over the That's edge it, because the passion is there like yeah. i love doing yeah, we this. see it pal <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah brother oh yeah <laughs> love it bro yo so if you had a weed superpower what would it be oh. could be for growing could be smoking you snap your fingers x happens could be uh, anything Okay, okay. Make it good. You get one wish. One wish. One wish. Oh my gosh. Okay. I. This is so nerdy. I would wish that I could smoke as much as I want and it wouldn't affect my lungs in any negative way. Dog, that's a fucking damn near the best one I've ever heard, bro. I can smoke for life and not ever think about like, like never oh, be like you know because that's day, my, that's my one thing. It's yeah. like I I don't get the right kind of high from an edible yeah. or from a uh, from dabbing. Yeah. It's only when I smoke that I get that relief of my stomach. Yeah, and so I'm just like I don't I I do the fresh frozen. I, I'm making some tinctures and stuff. Cause I really want, I don't want to take a tea break necessarily, but I want to take a lung break. Yeah. You know what I same. mean? So that would be my one superpower is like, you know, I want to eventually figure out how I can get the right effect for my endocannabinoid system without anything you put in your lungs that's hot. Yeah. Is carcinogenic. So, exactly. You know, exactly. yeah, like, yeah, I'm just no, gonna be real not, about it. Like, yeah, no, that's you know, cool. Like, that's a good one. As a smoker, that's fucking, I damn near switch my, my wish to that. There you go. I just wish for more weed on oh, my wish. You know what I'm saying? I always get more you weed. Know, I always <laughs> get more weed. Fuck yeah. So now, Macho Mids, I need your top three strains of all time, brother. Okay. We're going to go one old school, one new school, and a desert island strain. You stuck on the island with nobody's coming to get yeah, you. Yeah, stuck on the island with no one coming to get me, JP. I'm going to tell you on that one, it's a 100% chem dog. If I had to smoke one thing for the rest of my life, I'm a chem dog. Now, I'm going to go more specific. Respect that. I the respect best that. chem dog I ever had, uh, Linda Sylvie, Planet Herb, Cherie Sylvie in Redding, had this chem dog back in 2009, 2010. It was just phenomenal. And, like, I've never had one as good as I got there. But that's that's got to be my top strain of all time. I can always smoke it, that beta caryophylline dominance. Just a crowd pleaser, man. Just the perfect strain for me. So that's the island. That's stuck on an island. Cool. Old school. Hit Old me. school. Okay, so I brought this. This is a crazy story. Uh, last night I was hanging out with Sebastian and the Delta Boys, 
and they they're like give us your three strains for the good pizza i told them the old school is a super deep cut uh juicy fruit he's Ooh. like no way nice. he's like i've got juicy fruit right here from up north no fucking so way so i brought you we're gonna roll this up oh hell yeah so the juicy fruit is the thai sativa uh mixed with the me? afghani get a whiff of that yeah i want yeah hell yeah if that doesn't take me back, I don't know wow, what does. Dog, that's juicy fruit. That I love the juicy fruit. Also, let me, big let me crack a nug real quick. I yeah, wanna, crack I wanna, a I nug. Get in there, brother. Get in on it. <laughs> so we used to get this juicy fruit. So the dispensary I would get this at back in the day was Farm AC off Balboa in San Diego. When I was in college, we would, you know, hustle up our money, save it all up mm -hmm. for this sixty dollar eighth, mm -hmm. and you know, we you can't let a crumble fall, you know. Like now, right. it's like a different story. But back then, you know, we'd do anything to get that. And uh, something new you fucking with? Something new I fucking with. Let me get this shit right here. So this is the my favorite strain of the last five years is the uh, Natty Bumpo. Which is, uh, it is seventh place Emerald Cup 2023. Um, but its lineage is o double OG Chem um, mixed with 5G, both, both from Rebel Grown. That smells amazing. God We're going to smoke this. This is literally, I'm growing this right now. I've been growing Rebel Grown for six years. So this is living soil, regenerative, sun grown. Um, that's sun grown? That's sun grown, God, homie. Damn. Done right. Done right. Sun yeah. grown is my favorite. Yeah. The studies show the bro science ended up being real science. Yeah. Higher terpene content right. comes from the sun. Um, yeah. Not everybody has 95% sun coverage like in Northern right. California. So I get where the whole hate on on the sun grown mids or the no you know outdoor a lot of that's like you know okay well you're growing that in oklahoma buddy like you're not growing it in a terroir where it's like phenomenal let's get this i like those answers pal i like those answers now if you could bring back one strain what would it be Ooh. no cheating it's really gone no cheating it's really gone mm. Well, I know it's coming back though, so I can't say that one. But the for the longest time, I couldn't get Purple Urkel. But apparently, Purple Urkel is like Jaleel White has got his Purple Urkel on, and it's it's back, baby. It's interesting you say that because my last guest was Greasy Couture, and that has been brought up as the strain you'd bring back. And he fucking gave me some Purple Urkel, and no I forgot way. to smoke it. You just reminded me I had it. Just take a dry pull. Mm. Let me know what you think. The nose was there. <coughs> the nose was him, Jim. Oh, that's him. It's him, Jim? Got any cheese? Laura. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> the Urkel, man. Take a, take, take a dry pull. Just like, you know what I mean? Just, yes. just pull it. And just give me your final. I thought, I thought that was pretty fucking accurate. Oh, bro. Right? Mm-hmm. Right. The gassy, right? Yeah. Hell yeah, bro. Now we're going to take it to your smoking weed pet peeve what grinds your gears brother Ooh, grinds my gears uh i can't stop talking like this i'm sorry guys yeah. i'm not as good as him when someone has the fish lips and they get your blunt soggy not a fan or a camper on the j it's like get yourself a sleeping bag or a tent you're going camping over there. Hand it over, brother. And they're just talking and they're talking. <laughs> just camping, dude. If you camp, I, I don't, for most of us that have been doing it a long time, it's almost, it's built in. It's yeah. puff, puff, yeah. and then you just kind of, it's just kind of built in. You don't even, yeah. you know, if it's really good weed and it's a two people, yeah. really good weed, maybe a third puff. Chill with it. And then, yeah. yeah. But it's like, know the situation yeah if all the homies are rolling up outside champs or mj bizcon in that little corner over there that's a one puff and pass because you got eight homies unless yeah. you start a rotation of three blunts which a lot of times we do so you know it, it's all it's all no yeah. self-awareness yeah be aware and and keep your lips dry yeah that too <laughs> that's a good one that's a good one. 
Um, let's talk about your favorite place to smoke, bro. Backyard, garage, wrestling ring. So sad, dude. Oh, I can't. Up, dude? I can't smoke in my favorite place no more. What? Why, you know what my kids? favorite place used to be to smoke? Bedroom. No, Disneyland. Why can't you smoke there anymore? I used to anymore? smoke in Disneyland because now. Did you go dressed up like this or what? I have. Oh my <laughs> god, this guy's a legend. I did. I went to Disneyland dressed as Macho. I'll send you a video of it. Please do. That's um. Great. But yeah, so Disneyland used to have a smoking section for cigarettes, oh, no for shit. for vapes, everything, okay. right? So you go in there and you could, you know, you could you could roll yourself a spliff, it's got a little tobacco in it. Yeah, and if yeah, you yeah, sit yeah. on right. the edge, no one would know. But but once we got the pen life, mm -hmm. you know, I it looks indistinguishable from from a nicotine device. So for years I would go in with dabs and I'd go over there to Tom Sawyer's Island. And just the happiest days of my life, right? I got my kids, I got my wife, I got a, some good hash, and I'm at the happiest place on earth. Yeah. And that's my happy place. And then they ripped out those smoking sections for Star Wars Land. And now the they generous. do, You, they got the security system with the bio scan and the metal detector. Damn, and bro. they'll be like, sir, we see that vape. And, and oh, you'll get shit. you'll get banned from Disneyland, and they got cameras everywhere. I don't know if you know this, but I never been. Bro. Disneyland is an op, bro. Disneyland uh, is an op. They got the micro kid. cameras everywhere. Chill. So I had a friend get banned for life from Disneyland for hitting a pin where he thought nobody was looking. So I'm not trying to get banned from my Damn, kids' favorite shit got vacation real, bro. spot. She got real over Disney. Disney, wow. bro, it's a love hate thing. Bro. It, it sounds like it, man. What's the first smoking device Macho Mids ever MacGyvered as a kid? Ooh. Ooh. Okay, that the first one? Yeah. That's funny because that's the first time I ever smoked weed. Atta boy. What you got? What would you guess? Okay, it's one of the three. Can, homemade bong, or shitty pipe. You got but, it on the first mean? round, my the guy. Can. The can. can. The classic can. Yeah. That was the first the time. Can. Do you remember what uh, kind of soda it was? It was a Coke. Coke Cola, me too. Red and white. Nice red and red. And white, just burn dude. that red just off red and say some black. Dude. You know what I mean? Get and, it all red uh, stuff. Yeah, it was yeah. just thrown in a Nalgene bottle, some buds, and then swam out to the middle of a lake on a, one of those square floating docks, and then opened up the Nalgene bottle and pulled the can out, pulled the lighter out, and there stars everything that's when Beautiful. i knew it, it just took one time and i was like yeah me too i'm hooked how old were you i was 19. oh yeah, that's good man that, yo, yeah. that's good you wait let your lungs develop but shit like that I was fucking way too young that's cool man were your parents cool with it oh you were 19. yeah i was 19 what so no I, my mom was never cool with it right, 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 sure. until she got degenerative hip disease and then all of a sudden no doubt she opened up to it sometimes some real shit has to happen where you need cannabis to relieve pain cancer you know yeah you're, no, you're like absolutely. fuck it i'll take anything yep and you that's where I mean? she was at was no she doubt. she couldn't take the pain medication no more no doubt because it would make her sick um and yeah over my years working in social services we got multiple people off of opioids god um, bless you yeah including my mom that's good oh, bro no. No, 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 we let it die of natural causes. Bro. There you, you go. You did nothing wrong, sir. Okay. You, you didn't do one of these. Oh, uh, no, then no, Then I would have no. been looking at you like, Ninth. My, my homies that edit my shit, they'd be like, yo, bro, you be looking crazy when somebody ashes on your show. I'm like, what you mean? And they're like, just They'll be like, yo, we be watching it. your face, dog. Watch when you edit your shit, bro. You you looking at them kind of crazy. <laughs> I'll be looking at them like, you motherfucker, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing, brother? You know, I just learned that like in June. I didn't know that until June. Oh, it's new shit for me too. This guy Robbie Rockets. Yeah, it's new for me too. He's the one that taught me. You have to unlearn what you knew because I was just in Jersey. I was I school all my boys. You know, some of them love it, some of them are like fuck off. But uh, you know, the, we then now I got them doing. We'll be in the site. Like, yo, chill, chill. Just don't ask it, yo. Don't ask it. And then we got to go through the whole explanation. But you know. It was disrespectful to pass a fucking joint or a blunt with ash on it when we grew up, you know. So oh yeah, you know, unlearn, relearn. Especially now, teach one, teach one. especially now that like 
Robbie, CGO, <sighs> Bruno, they taught me, yeah, you man. know, how to keep it cool yeah, so it's bro. not just roasting your terps. Because yeah, I don't like roasting terps, dude. I like no, to get don't. all the flavors. Want to taste the terps. All the flavors. All the flavors, yeah. brother. Proper Doinks put me on all the joint tech and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, hell yeah. Those are my mentors in that in that little realm. You know oh what yeah, saying? I'm watching That's why I'm all that shit stuff up like now. this, bro. Look at these bars, cousin. Hell yeah. Come on, Cool Gene. get the fuck out of here. Hell yeah, that's what Come I'm on. trying to. That's where I'm trying to go. Which one, bro? Is because it's starting to, you know, starting to get embarrassing. It makes a in, difference. In these circles, you know, because like know, right, in right, college, right. I had Baby Bear, dude. My well, my buddy Baby Bear Mundo, yeah. dude. This hella cool guy just a roller extraordinaire i didn't roll a joint for any of my years of college because that kid rolled everything yeah man and then one day you're not gonna be with baby bear and exactly he leaves you in the dust you roll in those prego joints you know yeah what I'm saying? that was that was pretty was much a, a hash hole because i was like i was like cgo stressed as fuck he's just running around he can't roll for me bruno's yeah. over there got a line of people wanting to get a bruno roll yeah. what am i gonna do you know, so just stop on to... by good pizza, man. I'll roll one up for you. Hell yeah, hell yeah. But I'm only one though. I'm not gonna be. You know what I mean? You're well, not gonna also, get the party pack. You feel me? Also, I got at, you though. <laughs> also at the island, I got to shout out my homeboy from the five three zero. Robbie Rockets was shout there. Out. He was taking care of business. Shout out to and Robbie so Rockets. He rolled Great this name. out, dude. He rolled this out for us. That's the Doink Life. That's Mac Dre right there oh, on the fire. cover. Oh hell yeah, bro. Yeah, so that's we're five cool. three zero kids. Like people always bro. think that we're like. You know, redneck shit, like, but we fuck with nice the bar. Bay, dude. We've always been uh, Bay style. You could light that up for sure. Oh no, sir! Oh, that tastes amazing. No, I, we going we gonna like the hash here. hole towards the end, brother. Yeah, okay, yeah. Hell I've yeah. learned my lesson. Yeah. No, Shout out to uh, all you. the hash the hash boys that came through the show and knocked my head off on my show. Mm-hmm. Had me uh, in internal dialogue while we're while we're filming. You That's when I mean? the best magic Bro, happens, dude. I know, <laughs> man, I know, but I, you know what I mean. It's just I'm trying to I'm trying to keep you on point. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I'm on point. <coughs> you are. You are. <laughs> we on point. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yes. I took about twenty dabs yesterday. I'm Did like, you? Good for you. Good for you. <coughs> I'm ready. I had to warm up for yeah, this show. Yeah, it warms you up. I heard this is a smoker up. show. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. You know. Yeah, I'm usually like a two three doink. You know what I mean? Dabs yeah. at the end. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But I got a lot of shit I got to do today. And a couple plays I got to run. You feel me? So I'm going to not do dabs till right before I dinner. I feel you. It's wifey's birthday. Hey, happy birthday, babe. Love you, girl. Hell yeah. Mad love wifey to that. Wifey for lifey. Hey, man. Happy wife. Happy life. Oh, bro. That's the If shit mama bro. ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. Bro, that's you been in my crib before, huh? Uh, man, you must know my crib, dude. You know what I'm saying? We, hey, man, three kids. You know, we got the three same kids. kind of dynamic. I don't know if they get the same age gaps, but... Yeah. You know what and I mean? You still have three kids. You have three humans. And you seem you seem kind of like... How do you put it? I hate the word. It's like macho energy, right? Like, you're a macho energy I'll take guy. That. I'll you're take a macho that. energy guy, right? You have that 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 leading man energy. Yeah, That no leading doubt. man face, right? I know your wife is that leading lady energy, right? Oh, yeah, right? oh, yeah. So we alpha, like, both alphas, bro. It's wild. I didn't want to use the word alpha. I was shit. trying to no, avoid alpha, it. Du- alpha, right? But it's like, you know I, I mean? uh, that's when I when I found my wife, I was like, oh, my equal. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, Someone yeah, no just doubt. as savage as I. No doubt. And that's how I look at her. So she got to keep her happy. You got to keep, yeah. the, keep the wifey no happy. Doubt. Yeah, we we joke about it, like if we wind up meeting each other in another life, like we're not having no kids, bro. We we could take over the world if we have no kids. Kids slow us down. You feel me? Feel that? Yeah, man. Um, we're gonna take a quick break. Okay. What's up, guys? Just want to take a quick break to shout out my sponsor, the Gotti Brand. Listen, if you want to find the real fire in California, go check out the Gotti Brand. They got what you want. They're in NorCal, SoCal, Central Valley, San Diego all over the state of california here's the list go check them out tell them good pizza sent you the Gotti brand got you guys covered so if you could smoke with two people one dead one still alive who would they be oh man that's a good one okay one dead would be my grandfather nice just an excuse to see him of course and Love you that. know, he's a Southern Baptist minister, so I would get a kick out of him smoking a fatty of, you know, the blessed herb. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> and then, you know, uh, 
someone alive, I think my last chance, I think I'd have to go with the one that I'm the most worried that I'm not going to get to is Willie Nelson. So wow. Willie, Willie's getting towards the end of his journey. Yeah. And, you know, same thing. I had this goal of meeting Ric Flair. And Ric Flair's, you know, also at that point where it's like, I don't know how many of these heroes, legends that are up there that I'm going to get to meet and smoke with. Yeah. So it was like he was like top of my list. So when I got to smoke with him, it was like next on the list is Willie. Um, Tommy Chong would love to smoke with Tommy Chong, nice, nice. Woody Harrelson. But but Willie is like for sure number one right now. Two things. That has become a very popular answer. In fact, I think the guest right before you said that. And number two. You just answered my next question. What would your dream cipher be? Like five heads. And you just named five heads. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I already named the five you heads. You did, bro. That's yeah. perfect. Woody Harrelson. That's a good one. Woody bro. Harrelson, Matthew McConaughey. Oh, definitely um, Matthew McConaughey. Fucking, you know, Joe Rogan. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Joe Rogan. Like, I, <laughs> you know, Theo Vaughn, all those guys. I would Theo Vaughn for show, bro. I'm going to try to get him on the show, man. Uh, I, know, I know I know somebody who knows that him. would be legendary. I know, like his hair know, alone bro. is just like it's fire. I'd pay for his mullet just to be on the show. Oh yeah, man. I mean, there's just like if it was like yeah. you know you had to start a subscription service and you can only pick like five podcasts or whatever, it would be like you know you Theo Joe Rogan, you know, and that's like. I'm not gonna name another one. It's conspiracy oriented. No but, doubt, no doubt. <laughs> you know, I I'm appreciate gonna... <laughs> you that I'm on the list, brother. Thank you. Yeah, man. No, no you're doubt. my favorite cannabis podcast. Oh, thanks, for man. Sure. Appreciate that, dog. For real, for real, for real. Let me ask you this, Macho Mids. If your brand was a band, who would it be? It could be multiple bands, rappers, you name it. What you got? Oh, if my band was a brand. Brand was a band. <laughs> My brand was a man. <laughs> that shit was good. That shit was fire. Oh, hell yeah. Okay. So I would say uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers because I'm shirtless. Yeah, bro. I fucking slap the bass. Like, <laughs> I go to these events. I'm usually not wearing a shirt. I put one on for you just because it would be super weird having yeah. pizza with this dude shirtless so but at these events i've usually got my top off so yeah. it's very rock and roll yeah. anthony kiedis um california vibes like that's Damn right it's just my aesthetic you know like i love that can i tell you something that was the first cassette tape i ever owned it was blood sugar sex magic and it yes. was recorded off my man's tape you know what i'm saying like yes. third grade which was 1990 fucking Something early nineties. We're like on the we're the same age, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just turned forty. <laughs> okay, so I'm, I'll be forty you're, in two years. You so. on the fourth floor yet? Okay, still yeah. on the third floor. Still I like on it. the third floor. I like baby. It. take your time, baby. Two more take years, time, baby. Bro. Two more. No years. rush. Enjoy there's no, it. There's nothing that happens when you're forty. That's cool. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you could do a dope birthday celebration. I know, which you should. But then you're that much closer to like yeah, Tom Brady, bro. and then it's like yeah, bro. Shit gets weird, man. It does. So now at this point, you're going to show some love and shout out your favorite plug from back in the day, man. Who plugged Macho Mids, Randy Davidge, back in the day? Don't use the, you know, the government name if you oh, don't yeah, feel safe yeah. about that. Don't you know use the government name. Okay. Oh. You know, the best one that kicked it down the most was Jay Biddy. So he was my grower mentor. Jay Biddy. Shout out to Jay Biddy. Shout out Jay Biddy. He gave me more free weed than I deserved. Uh, more like a gentleman. You know what I mean? Love that. We all had that plug that yeah, like man. might just look at you and be like, this motherfucker needs a good day. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, just yeah. like throws shout you down a little plugs. extra. Those are yeah. the plugs you want. Those are the plugs that don't exist. Well, that's why you got your shout out, sir. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you still in contact with him? Y'all still cool He's people? He's still a good friend, dude. Oh, we bro, okay. we still garden together. So look, oh, bro, this is perfect. So listen, on June 16th is National Plug Day. Make sure you get him something nice. Nothing, nothing crazy, a little $20, a little Venmo, a little cup of coffee, maybe a joint. Yes. Maybe an ounce, whatever you got. Yes, Take absolutely. care of him June 16th, bro. June 16th. National Plug Day. Also, June 16th. You know, take care of Macho Man if he's your plug. That's Shout right. out. That's right. I get gifts. <laughs> Shout out to the homies. You know who you are. I get gifts every year since I started Plug Day. I, I like it. Day, you know I like saying? it. I love and it. They haven't missed a year Support yet. Support it. 
Yeah, yeah. Support those Chop, who support you. Bro, my boy Chop got me an Italian flag colored baseball jersey there that says go. good pizza, bro. I can't wait. I'm going to wear it on the show. I'm into this. I, I don't know what episode. I was waiting for it to get cold because it's been hot as fuck lately. I'm, I'm super that into this. Yeah. I have to make sure that I have Macho Mids merchandise by that yeah, point. Bro. Yeah, bro. No, it's going to be word, it's gonna be by the new year. But but definitely by that time next year, he's going to be getting a nice little care package right. with my face on That's it. Right. That's which right. Which will crack him Love up. Love that. <laughs> So shout out one of your mentors that had a huge impact in your life, bro. Uh, let's see. You know, okay, so I got I got I'm gonna shout out a couple people. Uh you know, first off, I'm gonna go with kind of one of the first people that taught me some things in the cannabis game. Um Derby Rit Derby Vic. Um yeah. Victor Suarez was uh, a good friend of mine, and he's he's passed on. Um, and his wife is carrying on the Derby name right there in San Francisco, the Jackets. Um, nice. But he was a banger, dude. He was a banger um, cannabis person. Just a, just taught me so much. He'd be like, "Don't." Well, I can't say a lot of the stuff he'd say, but he'd be like, "Don't be a little bitch," you yeah. know, and like yeah. just just hard on you but like in a good way yeah. and just really like player don't play that shit you know just all that shit just that bay area like when i look at people that i'm like yo that guy i looked up to a lot so um shout out vic and then so also involved in that circle is uh my boy chemo he's he's not much older than me but he's definitely a mentor as far as like i have no a little like I've been around cannabis a long, long time, but I never was in the the industry until a few years ago. I was always outside the industry, but I knew tons of people in it, mm -hmm. but I never needed to know things about people's beefs and like different things about like, you know, what you shouldn't say or not say. And so chemo, my buddy, he's just taught me a lot about the, the P's and Q's of, you know, things can be pretty like clicky, you know what I mean? Like you don't know who doesn't mess with who. Yeah. And like, he kind of helped me navigate that. Also got me into a lot of things that I wouldn't have gotten into in the beginning. Um, and he just kind of took care of me in that aspect, getting my name on guest lists and stuff. Nice. So Huge shout out to him. So those two, and oh, he, yeah. he's making custom derbies. I'm, he's going to embroider my derby that I'm getting from the store. And there we're going to go. put 5-3 all on the sleeve and, Fire. you know, shout it out and stuff. So nice. he's doing some really cool stuff with embroidery. So. I like it. I like yeah. it. Let me ask you this. If you, could, if you could go back to the young you the day before you hopped in the game, before Macho Mids jumped off the porch, <laughs> yeah. what would you tell you? Oh, man. No matter what, don't quit. Don't give up. Don't be a bitch. Don't be a bitch. That's, if I was to go back, that tough love, right? Well, Nobody's right. telling that no way no more. They're going to hurt not, your fifis. Hurt might hurt your fifis. You know I'll mean? be like, don't be such a bitch. You know? Just, just do it. Just, yeah. just do your thing. And at the end of the day, when the dust settles, everybody's color shows up. You can't. You can only dye your shit for so long, dude. The water soaks it all out. Yeah. So you know, just be you, be a good person, and don't sweat it. Just don't be a bitch. Yeah. Solid advice for any of the youngsters out there. Just jumped off the porch, or you thinking about jumping off the porch? Don't be a bitch. Yep. Now we're gonna do some rapid fire questions. Okay. I'm ready. I'm ready for the rapid fire. Yeah. And you have to answer them all in that voice. Okay. You like smoking the hot or the cold? I like smoking the cold, stone cold. <laughs> Joints or blunts? Oh. Oh. <sighs> blunts. Like if you're like you can't have one for the rest of your no, life. No, no, no. I mean, yeah. No, preferred, preferred. I mean, I typically smoke joints, but I, cool. I, I love blunts. So it's okay. like. It's hard to tear me out of that one. Bongs or bowls? Oh, bongs. Cold Bubbles. start or hot start? A uh, hot start. Rig or Puffco? A rig. Street smarts or book smarts? Street smarts. Batman or Superman? Batman. Sour or haze? Sour. 
Nas or Jay Z? <laughs> Jay Z. Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat? Ah, get... ah Street Fighter, yeah. Regular doinks or hash holes? I like hash holes. Past that, or I'm smoking this to the face. I'm smoking this to the face. Favorite Ninja Turtle? I was didn't want to assume. Michelangelo, yeah. 80s or 90s? Ooh, 80s. Coke or Pepsi? Coke. NorCal or SoCal? <laughs> NorCal. Pizza or tacos? This is a hard one to do to you. No, it's not. Oh, oh, to do to me. Okay, let's see where this is going. Uh, Don't worry, I've been disrespected on my show before. Do it. Just do it. Get it over with. I'm going to go. I got, I, like, I can't lie. I, I got to go tacos. Bro. It's good. It's your truth. It's your truth. I got to go I'm tacos. Your balls. I got to go tacos. Pizza with pineapples or no pineapples? <sighs> I'm respecting no pineapples. Tacos or burritos? Tacos. Beach or snow? Oh. I can't. I can't both. Okay. Well, that one doesn't usually make people groan. <laughs> I can't. Dude, I'm. I'm a. I'm a. I lived in San Diego, and like I'm Got from you. the mountain, and like literally, I surf, I snowboard. It's like it's. I feel it. You part of who I am. I like I can't. I can't. Yeah. Beauty of living in California, you can go from surfing Man. to snowboarding to longboarding on a skateboard, yeah. all three in one day. Yeah. That's a fact. Where else in the world can you do that? So I'm here, folks. In and out or five guys? <laughs> in and out all day long. Cheetos or flaming hot Cheetos? Uh, regular Cheetos. Crunchy or soft? Or crunchy. That's right. The Wire or the Sopranos? Uh, Sopranos. Pacino or De Niro? <sighs> Pacino. Godfather 1, 2, or 3? Godfather 2. Automatic or revolver? Depends on the situation. That's right. I think that's the right answer. <laughs> I never told anybody, but that's the right answer. <laughs> Smoke Disney carts or last year's outdoor for one month straight? Oh, that one's easy. Last year's outdoor. Popular answer. You got to smoke Jack or Blue Dream for the rest of your life. <sighs> Dude, you know what? If I want to be the cool kid, I'd say Jack, but I'm going to be honest with you. The Blue Dream. No doubt. I'm gonna be that rare breed. I don't care what people think. Bro, when it came out, it was fucking. Dude, nobody was saying none of that shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that is no disrespect to Jack. Because no, I bro, love bro, Jack. Bro, bro, honestly, that would probably be my answer because I can't do Jack forever, bro. No, I couldn't. I can't couldn't. That shit is way and too I love, aggressive for me. I bro. love Jack Hare. You're getting. You're lost in the woods. You get a pack of matches or a hatchet to survive with. What are you going with? Uh, the hatchet. You're getting chased by a bear or a shark. What would you prefer? Uh, shark. Body shot or face shot by Mike Tyson? <clears throat> Body shot. Shot of 151 or a hot dab? Oh, shot of 151. Gelato runs turps or OG gas? Dude, this is the easiest one you've asked. OG gas all the way. Wu Tang or death row? Uh, Wu Tang, dude. <laughs> Wu Tang, protect your neck. Oh, yeah, again and again. Well done, my friend. I like your answers. Thank you. No doubt. No doubt. This is a fucking fun and interesting and entertaining podcast, my friend. I appreciate that so yeah, much. I'm so glad to be here, bro. Appreciate brother. you, bro. Um, before we get up out of here, man, I'd love to share with the people the power of networking. Um, you know, what did, you know, how did we meet? And then uh, who do you know that I should know to get on the show? So how did we meet? Was it, it was pretty organic, right? It was, it was pretty organic. So it senior. was, I, I had, uh, I had started, I want to say May or June, I started following you. Oh, nice. And then um, it had popped up and I liked it. And then I, I, I think I followed then. And then right around Hash Hole, CGO, I was in Vegas or something. And he said something about it. And also I came and hung out with uh, Bruno, my buddy Bruno. Oh, nice. Hell yeah. And Bruno was like, yeah, proper doinks is here. Good pizza is here. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's the podcast, right? And so I was like, I was already primed for it. And then Hash Hole Island happened. 
and I didn't, and I, one of my goals, I, I set up these stupid little dream board things or manifestation things. Mm -hmm. And it was like those three questions. I always love it when he's asking those three questions. So if I can hunt him down on the island, I want to see if I can get, do that. And it was just one of those things where it was like everybody, I was getting pulled so many ways and yeah. I didn't get a chance to. So a few days later, I was like, I got to hit him up and tell him I love his show and shit. Oh, and yeah, then, bro. And then we started talking and it just, it just flowed, man. It, it was did. like, it was, you Certainly never know did. if people fuck with you, right? Or if they're yeah, like, who the yeah. fuck is this guy? And it was like, you were super genuine and nice. And like, if people, uh, that's all I ask is for people to give me a shot, give me a chance. Yeah. I'm not everybody's cup of tea, right? No, like, no, me neither. But sometimes you, I'm a big vibe checker person, right? Yeah. And if I feel Always a vibe on vibe. someone, it usually yeah. means like, hey, explore this a little bit because this person is pretty rad or whatever. And it, yeah. it takes me in good directions. That is the power of networking. That's like yeah. probably my number one hidden talent is, yeah. you know, creating different clusters and webs of people, which yeah. I love. I love bringing them together. Yeah, that's dope. That's dope. And that's crazy you said that because I was doing the top three shit at the Hash Hall Island. And I'm looking at you while I'm doing one with someone. I said, like, oh, yeah, I'm getting this motherfucker. We're for sure getting him. And like you said, the night just went on. I was pulled in directions and it happens. never happened. But I'm glad you hit me because I was like, yeah, I want to get to know this guy. Because I'm, I'm, I don't know. Like, I like to fill people out before I get them on the show. Make sure yeah, it's absolutely. consistent with what we're doing. I don't want to piss my fans off. You know what sure, I'm saying? Sure, absolutely. So. But I was like, oh, this guy's been growing for 20 years. Oh, yeah, that's, come on. You got stories. Forget come about on, it. Forget about it. It's this fucking guy on the show. You know yeah. what I mean? So who do you know that I should I should know to get uh, on the show? Oh, man. So I'm going to throw a couple people out there. Don't one of them there. is one of, my, one of my favorite artists right now that I've worked with. I worked with him all summer. Uh, his name's MJ Matze, and he makes these just incredible – pieces of art week artwork that are okay. blunts he could make you a oh, pizza cool. slice a pizza box he could turn this into a blunt oh, he could do anything and he's just so talented That's and so cool. he's gonna be working with me um i'm gonna be judging and hosting at hash hole holiday in this creative rolling competition and him and weavers the godfather of rolling yeah, yeah, june yeah. the goon they're all gonna have their artwork there and they're gonna be judging these people that are gonna be doing creative roles and stuff. So I think he's just, he's super fun stoner guy. Just, That's I dope, think he bro. would be interesting to talk to. And then, you know, I got to shout out my boy. Cause he's like been, he, he, he's the one that introduced me to you and he's just been a huge fan for so long. And he, Robbie rockets, when I told him he was going to get to roll up for you, he was just super pumped. And, oh, hell you know, yeah. it's always good, you know, to have a good mix right you got the big ballers you know i'm not turtle pie co i don't got this big crazy brand and yeah. stuff but like keeping a mix because that's what the culture and the community really is For is sure. like there's gonna be people that want to do this that want to do that and this is the opportunity to keep that mix going of having yeah, yeah. you know super people at this level people at this level sure. having a good mix and so yeah. it's like he's he's coming up pretty hard he's he's no working doubt. his butt off Love doing that. the things you need to do, not just the roles, but also marketing himself sure. and getting merch and going out to events and putting in the sweat equity, yeah. which I respect the hell out of. Because I slept in my car, dude. If I wasn't sponsored, I'm I'm not paying for a hotel. I'll sleep in my car. Yeah. You know, I need to do my work, make my money, but that that just comes out of my pocket That's if they're right. not gonna sponsor me. That's so it's fact. like when you're new to the game or like you're coming up you got to get creative. You got to work with a smaller budget. Yeah. You got to do the right thing. So it's like, shout out to him for doing that. Um, you know, and Globber Downey Jr., man, he's, he's such a crazy hash maker. <laughs> um, just, I think getting him, getting Fire him on there. Too. Yo, link me up with all of them. I'm going to link you yeah, up link, with him, dude. Do yeah, it. for sure. Let's do it. Um, yeah, no. And, and they're, they're all solid guys. Um, Robbie and, and Dayton are from the 530. So it's like, nice. I like to shout out the 530 crew. We're all trying to do big things. Uh, you know, uh, Young Chowder, 
just toured with Burner. Yo, he's, he's cool too. I fucks with the, the young boy, man. He's a videographer, yeah. extraordinaire, but he also sure a talented is. rapper. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, I just put that together a little I, while ago. I was his driver at Ego Clash. I was his golf cart driver. I put the no stickers shit. on Burner's golf cart. Oh, yeah. no shit, bro. Yeah, and so... I did see you at fucking Ego Clash on the videos. On videos. Yes. Damn, And son. so he uh, he's a rapper from Gridley, which is okay. like right over by Chico. So okay. I always shout out 530. He's doing big things with Tight. the big burn man. So Yeah, he is. He is. He's always with the, um, with the homie. And, yeah. and not just the rapping, his videography skills with the drone and all oh, those yeah. angles. He's a talented yeah, young bro. man. Hell yeah. That's what's up, man. Well, link me up. We'll, yeah. we'll, uh, we'll see what we can do to get him on the show. Anything else we could plug for you, my bro? What can we do? What can my audience oh, man. help you with? Yeah, so I just want to so. uh, plug the sponsors. We got Lucid Psychedelics. Um, we got, you know, Functional Mushroom, Gummies. Uh, and then my other sponsor, Flour Mill. Mill Don't Grind. Keep the Hell stems yeah. on the top. You already know. You already know. You already Keeps know. And then, you know, you got the... Uh, Brothers Broadleaf, they're always, yeah. that's my preferred blunt rap. That's what's up, man. Um, I and gotta then, get dumb homies on the show. Of course, my number one flower sponsor, we got Rebel Grown, Emerald Cup, first place, Beautiful. seventh place, Breeders' Cup Award. Um, also, a shout out to um, Zotics and Ember Valley, right? So Ember Valley is in the 530 in Reading. They sponsored the flower for a lot of my stuff that I did this summer. Nice. Along with Rebel Grown and Zotics, Chris was super generous to sponsor some of our artwork. Um, Ember Valley has sponsored artwork. Ember Valley sponsored roll bars that I do, did with Bruno. So I really cool, want to shout them out. They're from my hometown, Reading. They've supported me through a lot of stuff. So and they have killer flower. Hell, that looks amazing. I can't wait to roll some yeah, up. some yeah, good sun yeah. grown. Yeah, Hell yeah, bro. Uh, Ember Valley is indoor only. Oh no, I know Ember Valley. They're coming on the show soon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Rebel Grown is the Sun Grown. Yes, that's sir. dope, bro. I've heard of Rebel Grown as well. I've never had the product though. That's dope. Yeah, it, bring some, man. It's a rare breed, dude. It's kind of hard to get Rebel Grown in some places. Oh no, shit, it's just, man. It's it's hard to it, you know when you win first place in World Cup. No doubt. It, it becomes like the bougies just buy it yeah. all out. So yeah, you Tight, know, bro. save some for the little guys over yeah. here. You know, yo, save my me a brother. Turkey bag. Well, thanks for coming out to the show, bro. Hey, it's been an absolute pleasure, for real. Anytime, brethren. Yeah, and when I do my mushroom podcast, you're invited on my show. We'll talk about more about psychedelics. Can't wait, bro. Count me in. Hell yeah. I'll, I'll eat some mushrooms on your show, too. Hell yeah. That's yeah, what yeah. I'm looking to do, that yeah, yeah. funny stuff that's yeah. been coming out on the podcast. Yeah, oh, I'll try to dude. keep it together for you because I feel like you're going to make me laugh my ass off, but I think it's going to be a great that's show. That's the best part is yeah. when you're like, tearing up because yeah. you're laughing so yeah. hard on mushrooms. I can see that. I can see that. <laughs> well, shit, man. Thanks for coming out, bro. Yo, Macho Mids, Randy Davage, man. Tune in. Tap into the movement, man. He's doing big things. I love this guy. He's one of us. You feel me? Yeah. We do it for the culture. <laughs> the most played out phrase you motherfucker there, right. Dude. We do it for the culture. <laughs> we do, <laughs> we do, do it, it for, for the culture. culture. For the culture, brother. It's for the culture, brother. No mitts. Can we no get a, Can I get a peace, love, and good pizza from from the guy yeah peace love good pizza that's what it's all about here at good pizza you already know with the pepperoni yeah <laughs> so you already know man peace love good pizza we'll see y'all next time man we up out of here <laughs>